if you've got health issues, but you're not done, you want to be able to work, or you want to keep your job, well, I'm in the same position, and I'm gonna explain how I do it successfully. Um, and what I've done is I've put this in order, and the tips get bigger and better as they go. Because we're, we might be disabled, but we've got abilities. One of the main reasons why I am employed and disabled is because I am organized to f I have very clear to-do lists, I have priority lists, I'm really detailed, not really detailed, I don't like, I'm not a meeting person, I think people should be doing their jobs not just sitting in meetings all day. Um, I'm brutal with my time management, so my diary, my calendar is very clear, um, I block out times to actually do work. Um, so for example today I'm going to hospital, it's currently Ten to two. Yeah. It's currently 10 to 2 in the afternoon on a midweek day. I started work at 04. So I've done my hours because I have to get to hospital. And I've managed this by being organised. Organised. It is key. You have to be to be able to achieve all your tasks and hit all your deadlines um, to stay employed because we need time for hospital and things like that, or I, I certainly do, or we need time for our chronic fatigue. If you're not organized, you're not gonna stay in employment. You're not gonna get employed. Never miss a deadline. I do not miss deadlines. Whenever someone asks you to complete something, always make sure that you add on fat to how long it's gonna take you to do it so that you do not fail to hit deadlines. It is extremely rare for me to miss a deadline. And if I do miss it, it's usually because something else has come up that we've I've agreed with the customer or my boss that we're gonna prioritize. Um, so don't miss a deadline. To try and protect your employment, you need to not give any reasons for people to target you. Um, and I know it shouldn't be like that, but part of the challenge of working when you're disabled is you, we kind of need to shine or at least not draw negative attention to ourselves. So don't miss deadlines. I have a contingency for everything. I am the queen of contingencies, which, because I work in logistics, so I'm a transport specialist. Because we're in transport, we're like the arse end of the industry. Shit always goes wrong. And I think that's whatever industry you're in. Things always go wrong. Yes, you have a plan, plan for the worst, hope for the best. So I always have a contingency, not just one backup plan, multiple backup plans that you've got in place and you've communicated so that when shit does go wrong and say, for example, I'm flared up, the team know what the process is. Say, for example, transport to work. So if you get a lift off someone and for example, they're not well, so your transport falls through, make sure you've got backup money sat to one side so you can pay for a taxi. Have contingencies. You know, if you take public transport to work and if you're going to have a flare up, that means that it's going to like really screw you up. If you're flared up, again, have your contingency of, is there someone that can give me a lift? Or do I need to use a taxi? Yes, it's spend that you don't want, but versus the cost of a 10 pounds or like $15 to, to get to work versus your fatigue levels, is it worth it? So for me, transport, to get myself anywhere, I have multiple contingencies in place. This is really important in its self-awareness. The sun's a bit bright, but I'm trying to give you like a mix of backgrounds so that you don't get bored. I think a lot of people are not self-aware, especially knobheads. You know, they don't seem to be self-aware or it's even worse if they are a knobhead and they are self-aware, isn't it? But I, I digress, right? So I'm really aware of if my pain increases and my fatigue increases I decline which means that um, I just can't perform as well you know there's days where my brain fog kicks in and I'm responsible for a multi-million pound contract if my brain fog's kicked in I do not I repeat I do not make decisions that are worth a significant amount of money um, because I know that my brain's not kicking in but if I if I put in all the tips that I'm going through with you today it doesn't matter if I'm flared up, so I know I need to not make those, not work on those tasks on that day because I've already given myself fat, I've already got a contingency in place, the team are already aware. So all of these tips interlink, but self-awareness 
is absolutely critical. If you're not self-aware and you're not realistic with yourself, including your blind spots, including the, are you aware at the time if you're snapping at people because your pain's gone up? If you're not aware of it, you can't manage it. If you can't manage yourself, you will not be able to stay in full-time employment. Bubby, how are you? How's your day? Oh, bye. Was that it? Is that it? I'm done. That's all the love. That's f***ing love. So this is more for management. Um, I think I, I, I'm, I love trading and development. Admittedly, it took me a bit to get my words out there. But, um, oh, because, because, sorry, let me show this. Like, this isn't actually to do with this vlog, but I have driven myself and my mum from Stoke-on-Trent to Derby to visit relatives. Because I'm so fit. And I worked all day today. Because I'm like, I'm like, athletic aren't I aren't I I'm so fit but I do I, I know that I've got a bit of brain fog kicking in so I'm having to check you know a piece of paper to go what am I supposed to be talking about oh succession planning I love training and development right and I don't like dinosaurs you know the type of people where they're like this is my job you no, you can't look at this this is my job bullshit um, I think we should share knowledge so I always think that you need a good succession plan so whatever you're working on other someone else preferably people need to know how to do it so that if you're not well, you want whatever industry you're in, performance to be maintained if you're not there. Which means that there's no negative impact to the customer. And with the succession plan comes procedures. Because if you don't have procedures documented to then train people, there's no succession plan, which means you're shit at your job. Right? If you don't have procedures in place that you can train people up by so they know what's expected of them, what standards there are to meet, to, you need to work on it, in my opinion. Right? Um, and for me, I put those in place because I wanted to work in the human, well, because I not wanted, I worked in the humanitarian sector. So I'd go overseas a couple of times a year to Africa. Well, to be able to keep doing that, I had to make sure the, the business said to me, you can do it but the standards must be maintained when you are not there. So I got very good at that very early on in my career. And it has massively helped me when I became disabled. I haven't moved spot, because to be honest, I haven't got the energy now, I'm starting to burn out a bit, but I still want to talk to you. There's a, I've done a separate vlog on battle buddies. If you don't know what it is, just quickly, in the military, in the army, you have a battle buddy. You and one other person is your battle buddy, generally of the same gender. And that means that if you're in war, they've got your back, but more importantly, they have your back when you go home. So they're there to make sure that your mental health is good, anything you need, you support each other, you are there for each other. You are battle buddies to help win the war. You need battle buddies, okay, in your life to survive. You need your specialist, you need your battle buddies at work. You are at war. You are at war with your disease. And no one goes to war and wins without being strategic and without their battle buddies. So watch that vlog, it's really important. This one's a bit of a this is your exit plan. So if you're currently employment, in employment, sorry, you need to have an exit plan. If you have a degenerative disease, don't bury your head in the sand. This is my recommendation, obviously, I could be talking shit. You can ignore me if you want, okay? But the people that I see that bury their head in the sand then struggle massively with their mental health. Those of us that face it head on and go, do you know what? I've got a degenerative disease, I'm not going to be able to do this up until retirement age. I need to adjust and adapt. Those of us that do that have much more positive mental health and something to look forward to. So it's taken me a long time, you know, of panicking and worrying on what am I going to do? What am I going to do disabled? Like, I can't start at set times. I can't finish at set times. I can't travel. Um, sometimes I'm fit for work at two in the morning. What job can I do that's like, I need a job that's operations 24 seven. I couldn't just have a job that's Monday to Friday because what if I'm ill nine till five, but all right the rest of the time. Like, it's not that simple. Um, you know, what if I'm really ill on Wednesday, Thursday, but I'm great Friday, Saturday. You know, I need flexi time. I'm gonna put a link to um, vlogs on passive income because just because we're disabled, we're not dead. There's lots of opportunities for us but to be honest, I didn't know any of these opportunities pre-illness. I had no idea. I'd never heard of passive income. Didn't know what it was. 
Now I'm like, wow, there's loads of opportunities for us out there. Loads. We just have to grasp it and get a bit more educated. Back to the self-awareness one. I've had to learn a lot. This is the most important tip. Do you come out of the closet and explain to people how severe your health issues are? Or do you stay in the closet in case they use it against you? Now, I did a hybrid. I did a bit of both. I stayed in the closet with certain people in the business and I came out of the closet with those closest to me, including my customer, certain people. Um, I fully came out of the closet only quite recently, um, which put my job at risk. You know, put my job at risk because if certain people in the business, you know, if the HR team were not comfortable with me working flexi hours as severe as my flexi hours are, if my customer turns around and says, we want you on site Monday to Friday, nine till five, I can't do it, I'll lose my job. And it's a reasonable request. Yes, there's the Disability at Law Act to protect us, but if someone wants a manager, a, a general manager on site at certain times, that's a reasonable request. It's not discrimination, it's a reasonable request. The risk of coming out of the closet is if someone uses it against you. So be so careful. If you think that someone might use it against you, do not, I, I strongly, strongly feel, I feel so strongly about this, don't come out of the closet. Don't come out of the closet. Don't tell them about your illness. And you also, what I've experienced recently is being fully out of the closet, everyone knowing, and there's a change in structure. So some people left the business who were very open-minded and inclusive, and they've been replaced by some individuals that are dinosaurs. And now, for the first time in my career, I'm experiencing someone, they actually documented that they're concerned my disability is having a negative impact on the contract. It's not. If you're not sure, don't come out of the closet. If you think that people will be open-minded, make sure you put in all the other tips that I've said before you come out of the closet so that, again, if someone does try and use it against you, you've got your contingencies in place. So I would love to hear from you on those of you that are working, how you manage it. I'd also love to hear from people that, for those of you that have come out of the closet and it's been used against you. But I think we do need to be realistic. You know what I said about if the customer says they want me on site Monday to Friday, nine to five, that's a reasonable request. I think we do need to be objective on if someone's been a knobhead or discriminated against us or is actually being reasonable, but we're emotional about it because we're desperate to work. So I'd love to hear from you. And I hope that even if one of these tips has been helpful, I really hope it makes a difference. Take care.